Janet McTeer, uh, you play Julia Walsh in the political thriller The Honorable Woman, uh, which aired on, on Sundance TV in the U.S. Uh, you know, she's a, an ambitious character, uh, the head of British intelligence, and, and she's kind of mysterious. Uh, what attracted you to this uh, particular project? Um, it was a combination of things, actually. Um, <clears throat> uh, obviously, the part is great, and I get some killer lines, some the best feminist lines ever written, I think. Um, but also, when I read the whole thing, you know, they sent me all the scripts and I read them. And, you know, I'm a reasonably intelligent human being. And I, it, it was so complicated that I thought, wow, this is, I'm going to have to read this again. And I read it again. And the second time around, I more or less got a hang of it. And I just, the idea of something being that clever, that doesn't um, insult the intelligence of the audience, and I thought was really wonderful. And then Hugo, I just think is fabulous. And um, when I'd spoken to him, I just thought he was great. And, uh, you know, it was a no brainer, really. Hey, uh, you mentioned the, that, that strong feminist uh, uh, dialogue and, and perspective of, of the uh, of the miniseries, and, and there's that great line of dialogue, of course, in the in the last episode where, where Julia's talking about outmaneuvering the men, and she says, like, yeah. I'm full of pussies, I'm the only one with a vagina. It <laughs> 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 says so much about uh, her experience as, as a woman in, in this particular line of work. Did you, like, relish having that particular moment of triumph for her? Absolutely. It was just great. It was brilliant. It was great fun. Um, it's, uh, and, but bizarrely, even though it is wonderful, it's one of those lines that's such a killer line that you have to do it 10 times because you're not quite sure you've got it right and you get slightly self-conscious because it's such a good line. Um, so I think I probably did it about 10 times. But um, uh, yeah, it was, it was, and it's just, you know, that particularly in England, maybe as much here, I don't know, but, um, you know, there's such an old boys network in all of those echelons of government and it was so great to have um to play a woman at the head of it and it was sort of you know i stella remington really who was um uh, very high up in the government in england and I, I sort of thought a lot about her and what it takes to be that kind of a cutthroat um uh, political uh head of a political team in that way in a in really quite a cutthroat way it takes a lot of balls and uh, Julia Walsh uh, can be pretty cunning, uh, and it can be hard to tell, especially early on in, in the miniseries when, when there's so much, you know, still mystery around it, you know, whether she's working towards the common good or whether she's more out for her own interests, you know, did you know what to make of her in that sense when, when you first read the script? Did you have a, a clear opinion on, on, on who she was and, and what her values were? Yeah, that's a very interesting question because we talked about that a lot <clears throat> in as much as, you know, how many people is she willing to um, get rid of or compromise or undermine or throw under the bus in order to fulfill her own ambition? And how much is it for the good of the country? And I think it's probably, depending on the day, half and half. Um, I think, um, I don't think she would necessarily, she wouldn't go against the country to do that I don't think she's I think they're very you know there's a reason why she does a job like that because she does believe in what she's doing I think um, but at the same time if you're going to do it you might as well get to the top and, and, and there are no no black and white heroes uh, or villains in this story everyone is sort of like in shades of gray uh, but looking back on it you know in, in hindsight do you think she's she's more admirable than not or, or more honorable than not if you will well, that's that's also a good question because that's the title, isn't it? Sort of in, if you think of all the people in it, and of, you know, is she an honourable woman? You know, um, I think she's she has honourable intentions, uh, with and occasionally dishonourable intentions, but in general, I don't think she thought that. I mean, she knows that people are going to die. She knows that people are going to get thrown under the bus. She knows that she has to sacrifice certain people and certain things in order to um, get where she wants and what she wants for the country and what she wants to resolve this political situation. But at the same time, she doesn't want to harm her old friend. She lets him off the hook slightly, you know. So it's it's she's she's a complicated person, and I think that was the other thing that attracted me. You know, it's the fact that she ends up in bed with him. You know, which is such a mistake, and you know, it's just. You just think that's what real people do. They, you know, they're not just kind of I'm the head of you know government agency. They, they actually mess up the way the rest of us do. 
And I like the fact that everybody had these little human stories and human flashes going all the way through. I like that. Uh, a character like Julia, you know, working in intelligence, uh, you know, inevitably as a, as as the nature of her her you know line of work, she has to keep a lot of her thoughts and feelings, you know, close to the vest. Uh, is it a challenge to to play someone who who is is withholding a lot, not only from from other characters, but sometimes you know from the audience also? Yes, it's fun. It's really good fun because it's, it's you because that's what that's where where you get that kind of beady quality, I think where you're kind of, you're watching someone and you're thinking, what are they thinking? What do they know that I don't know? And how much am I going to tell them that I know? And how much am I going to give away when I do? I'm not quite sure. So let me just try this one. And it's just, it's kind of, it leads to a kind of, somebody who's thinking 15 sentences to your one, you know, you know, you know it's just, that's really good fun to play because it gives you a kind of, it's like a, she was like a beam of light, I think. So when she was, when she was, you know, knew what she was doing and questioning people and really listening and really getting in there there was um she was fierce and focused incredibly focused and i that's fun to play too uh playing a character with so much going on under the surface uh do, do you try to envision you know a backstory or, or details that maybe aren't in the script uh, just to sort of help you get into the mindset of the character yeah very much so and particularly you know if you imagine being a young woman in that in that world and growing up in that world, uh, um, maturing in that world and getting on in that world and possibly constantly being taken over by guys or, or, or getting your feelings hurt and maybe showing that your feelings were hurt and then how, what does that do? That probably doesn't help. So then you, in the end, have to become even tougher than the men. And, um, and I think possibly somebody who has lived like that under that kind of pressure in that kind of situation with lots of sort of underlings i think people can they're used to getting their own way and they're used to getting their own way now and that can that can breed a kind of um i'm sure she doesn't go home and bake cookies you know what i mean i think it's a it's a singular mind uh, you know, a bit, a little bit like you know, the White Queen, which uh, was a miniseries you starred in a couple of years ago. Uh, you know, this you know takes a, a major political conflict and and it approaches it uh, largely from from the point of view of the women involved, uh, including your character and uh, Nessa, played the main character played by uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal. Do you think that brings something different to to this story than if it were primarily told from from a male viewpoint? Yes, um, first of all, because it's um, more <laughs> original like that um, um, and because Maggie's is a different character and the white so the white Maggie's is a different character because she also has a personal life and we see her personal story we can a tiny flash of my personal story but in in um, the honorable woman but um, Maggie has a whole personal history of you know her personal history of how and her damage and what happened to her and how she ends up where she is and how she resolves herself. She's a more fully rounded human being as a character portrayal in the piece. We see more of her life. Um, I think in The White Queen, even though it was a, when we were doing that, I, I kept, that's one of the things you're very right at that I kept saying, this is politics. This isn't just the women being bitchy behind each other's backs or the women, you know, when, when these women are going in and talking to the other women, this is politics. This is the only way that they can get anything done. And a clever woman will know where her power lies and she will know how to use it. And she will use it to the best of her advantage, whether that's cleverness or sex or anything. And the other big difference, of course, with um, Jaquetta was that she was a mum. So she had all of that and was you know genuine love for her children and the dynasty and all of those things that she was uh, creating as well as the politics and as well as living in this incredibly dangerous world where people got their heads chopped off all the time so in certain she was a warmer character much warmer character i think in many ways than julia who's who was more um you know, i'm i'm going to be better than the men in the men's world
Uh, a lot of the, the characters in The Honorable Woman, they, they sort of view Nessa as, as kind of naive or, or sometimes in over her head, but it seems Julia, at least, you know, comes to admire her by the end of the story. Uh, you know, how, do, how did you view Nessa uh, in this story? I think at the beginning, <clears throat> excuse me, I think she definitely thinks that she's um, uh, uh, naive and, you know, good for you, whatever. It, it's sort of marginally on my radar, but... And it isn't until it really starts going wrong and you realize, she, I realize that when I realize that I don't know what's going on and the ramifications of how, how, how much I don't know and why this situation and realizing that it could become so much more worse, so much worse than it, than it is, means that I have to step in. And in that sense, I, at, at the point where I think she begins to understand how Nessa has been duped and her backstory, and I think she begins to have a, 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 a grudging respect for her, which becomes, in the end, a, res a real respect for her um, as somebody who's actually trying to achieve something. And, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure she thinks we've done a great deal of good in the Middle East. <laughs> Some days better than others, perhaps, but it just seems to be a never-ending cycle of just trying to stop it becoming worse than it already is and trying to rescue a situation that's, you know, that the governments, all of them, have a big part in creating. Uh, you work a lot with uh, with Stephen Ray in the miniseries, uh, and, and you play his superior. And as you mentioned, the two of them, uh, you know, have have had you know this complex relationship. Uh, you know, but you know his character also has this kind of quiet, you know, inscrutable demeanor at times. You know, it's a little bit similar to to Julia at times. What's it like playing those characters against each other when they're both always sort of playing this chess game under the surface? Um, fun. I think it, fun is a word that I use an awful lot. <laughs> I think because it is great fun when you're playing with somebody as clever as Stephen and as much and as good as Stephen, um, you know, then you're, you're, uh, it's easy to play around with what you're doing, to do it three different ways, to play off each other because he's a great tennis player. You know, he just doesn't decide this is what I'm going to do and then you have to just deal with it. You, you play together, um, which meant that there was lots of colors that we threw around and and that's um, that's always a, re a really makes for a fun scene. Uh, the main series is uh, is eight parts, and it's all written and directed by by Hugo Blick. And you you mentioned your admiration for 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 his work. Uh, what was it like to work with him on, on you know for eight parts for this complex kind of story with this kind of challenging subject matter? You know, he was amazing. He was. I mean, <laughs> I don't know whether you've interviewed him. Have you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, he, he probably told you then, you know, he had this whole thing in his head for two years or something, and then he wrote it all down in six weeks. Um, and so he had the entire story in his head. And there was, what's amazing about somebody who has all those hats on is that you could expect them to be a little bit of a megalomaniac. And he wasn't. You, um, you know, if you came and went, wait a minute, what about, is it this or is it this or is it this? And he would go, Oh, no, you're right, actually, that's better. Or, no, actually, it's, it is that, and, and this is why. So, okay, good. So he was very collaborative. It wasn't kind of just do it like this. It was a real, um, and he, oh, he's always just, just in such good humor. He laughs a huge amount. And that makes life easy on set. If you work with people who shout and bawl and aren't very nice, it doesn't make for a nice work environment. And he was charming to everybody. He was a very charming man. Uh, you know, the Honorable Woman uh, is is a work of fiction, of course, but it does deal with uh, the very real, you know, Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Uh, I was wondering, you know, if if working on it, you know, or or the process, or, or you know, you know, any feedback to it, you know, did that have any any impact on on how you see the conflict or, or world politics in general? Do you have you know a lot of formed opinions about that going in? Uh, to be honest, I've always been very interested about the Middle East because it's such a it's such a hotbed and of ancient grudges and ancient upsets, and um, it's a very, very, very fascinating place. So, 
I, I had already read quite a lot about it before Hugo asked me to do it, so I was very, which is another reason why I was interested in it. Um, I find it a fascinating part of the world, as does everybody, I'm sure, but it's a, it's so complicated, such a complicated place. And by the end of the story, you know, uh, you know, we're not we're not directed to to feel one way or another about you know the outcome of this story and and the conflict, uh, you know. But there seems to be a question of you know whether the ends justify the means. And you also mentioned you know how how Julia is willing to throw some people under the bus to 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 get what she wants or what she needs. Uh, you know, do you do you think that there's a uh, too high a price to pay for for a meaningful solution to to problems this big? Well, I mean, <laughs> as someone once said, you know, that I can't remember who it was, somebody very famous. I probably look like an idiot for not remembering, but, um, you know, the, the Constitution, for example, the constitutional rights that, we all, that all Americans have, they were, they were built for peacetime, they weren't built for war. I mean, they were, you, I mean, they were built for war and they weren't built for peace. You know, the, you, you uphold the rights of humanity and the rights of human beings. And, all of the those inherent rights that's when you need them the most so that's when you need honor and integrity the most during during conflict it's easy to be honorable and marvelous when everything's fine it's really really hard when it's difficult so i mean that's a that's a that's a gray <laughs> shifting line of you know if you if you um if you if you go over the line but it saves lots of lives is it worthwhile if you do i mean you know most clever philosophers than me well i, I want to you know congratulate you uh, again on on the, the mini series uh, the success the critics choice nomination you earned uh, you know a few weeks ago uh, and, and best of luck at, at the emmys coming up oh thank you thank you very much <laughs>